Okay, we've got our heart base coated. It's dried and sanded. And now I've put out four colors on my palette. I'm just using this wax palette, or plastic palette. Um, any kind of palette works. But I want to do some variation in the background of the heart. So we've got the, the base color that we made, based the top of the heart with, which is our medium value bubblegum pink. I've got some of the electric pink. I've added a little puddle here of this lighter poodle skirt pink and some warm white here. And when I'm working on a background like this that I want some variation in, um, I like to do kind of a wet on wet technique. And I've got a, a large, this is a three quarter inch flat brush. And we're gonna start with our base color, this medium value of pink. And just start working some of that here into the background. Now I want this heart to be darker down here on the left and light up here on the right. And then we're gonna put some patches of some of the warm white into it to add some variation. So anyway, I'm basing with our bubblegum pink, which is this middle color. And I, my brush has got a little bit of water in it. It's just damp so that we can kind of keep that color wet. And as we come down to this bottom side, you can see where my wet paint is. It's a little bit lighter here. I'm gonna just go in with this dirty brush and pick some of that electric pink up. And I'm gonna start brushing that down here on this edge. And as I work back up into that wet bubblegum pink, I'm just lightening up my pressure a little bit and just working in different directions just to soften where those colors meet. Pick up some more. I'd like a little bit stronger color there. And soften that into it. If you get too much in your brush and it does, it's starting to smear together too much or traveling too much, just wipe your brush out. Pick a little bit of that base color back up and work that back into the darker pink. Just soften them together so you get some variation. Now as we come around to the right side, I'd like that to lighten a little bit. So I'm gonna continue with the, the medium value pink. If it starts tacking up too much, just pick up a little bit of water in your brush. And then we're gonna go to this lighter pink which is the poodle skirt pink. I can't remember these names. but I, You can see this one's a lot lighter, so I'm gonna brush that up here on the right side of the heart. And I'm brushing out to the edges so I don't get too much on the sides of my heart. And just working that, again, back into that middle value. Now on the heart, the final design, I've got some, some real light spots. I've just got a copy of it right here. But you can see up in here, there's some real light here on the right side of where the our center heart's going to be as some, and up here along these edges. So to get those colors, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the warm white and lightly brush that into some of these spots. And I'm not going to try to travel that out too far. Just, I'm going to keep that a little more concentrated. I'm going to wipe a little bit of that off my brush so I don't have so much pink in it. I'm going to keep wiping that so I don't have so much paint that I'm making it travel too far. And I'm just kind of tickling the, the edges of the, the brush over the surface to get that blended out into the lighter pink values. So let's pick up a little bit more of that white. And I'm going to add a little bit down here. So I'm going to lay it down in that area. Then I'm going to wipe my brush. And then to soften those edges. Now on this side I'm starting to get a little bit dry, so if you get too dry you can always pick a little bit of your base color back up. 
and soften that edge. So you can see that's, that's starting to look pretty, kind of a little cloudy looking. And then there was a little bit over here on the left side in this darker value. So again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that electric pink that we had put in over here and wet that down again a little. Pick up some of the warm white and brush that into the wet pink paint. Spread that out a little bit and then wipe my brush and soften that edge. You'll have to play with it to determine how much pressure you need to get put down on your brush to get that paint to move. Add a little bit more in there. And I'd like a little texture. You don't want it to be too smooth. So this is going to be like little clouds that the cupids flying through. And then I'm going to add a little bit more down here on this edge. Tap that in, and then I'm just doing a crisscross stroke to soften that out. bit of that pink back up to soften that edge a little more and I think that's a pretty good variation we can adjust those colors a little bit more after we get our design trays down and we start painting the cupid and the heart in so we're gonna let that dry and I want you to then trace your pattern onto the heart you can either use gray or white graphite whichever you can see white would probably cover more easily but it might be difficult to see it in some of these lighter areas, so if you use gray, just use a real light touch so you're just getting a light tracing down. I've got the heart here and I've, I've traced my design down in with a light gray graphite. This was an old sheet that doesn't come off very much, so I kept the, the tracing lines pretty light. Now I, I'm looking here, there's a couple spots that are a little darker, so I'm going to use this white um, plastic eraser, but you can get it like Hobby Lobby or any place, and just soften some of those lines down so they're not quite so prominent. They won't be so hard to cover with our light colors. So I'm just brushing away the crumbs. So once you get those marked down. I'm going to base in the whole design with um, warm white so we can make sure we cover this pink color. And I'm going to start out using, I have a little quarter inch angle brush, but you can use any any type of brush that's comfortable to you. You know, a flat or a filbert would work just as well. And when I base coat especially when I'm doing this over a whole design that is that I'm going to base in the same color. I like to work each section by itself just as if I was basing it in a different colors because I don't want to lose the I guess my tracing lines. If, if, I, if I follow these lines as I'm basing in, even though it's all going to be in warm white, I'll still be able to see where my design is. So I'm going to follow all these little sections and do them individually. You can see I'm just going to try to to get it in smooth as possible. It doesn't have to be a a solid coat. This is just just an undercoat so we don't have so much of that pink showing through our design. 
in case some of the colors that we put over it are, are more transparent. I very seldom do multiple coats of base coating. I find that by the time I, if I put one coat down and it's, it's fairly smooth, by the time I do all the layers over top of it, I don't really care whether that first coat is a solid layer that nothing shows through. In fact, it, it probably looks nicer if you have a little bit of the pink glowing through the design. I'll do a couple of these sections just to show you what I'm talking about and then I won't spend all the camera time doing this base coat. I'll stop and then we'll come back after it's all done. And these around the hair, you don't have to worry about being exact. I'm just if you brush over a little bit, that's fine. Just I'm just giving kind of a, a loose edge to that hairline. Move back over all this. Now the only part that you may want to do two coats on is the heart, because that the heart's going to be almost all white, so especially the center area, we want that nice and smooth. So you may want to do two coats of that on that and maybe two coats on the wings. But the, the body, her hair, and her face, don't worry about getting solid coverage. I'm going to fill in here in front of her ears. It probably would be more graceful if we pull little curls down from her hair later on top of that rather than trying to paint around those. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do this. Swing. I like to let things dry before I start painting right up against them. On these wings, I am trying to cover that outside graphite line. You want to tone that down so that's not going to be showing up in your final design. I'm going to do another, this one's dry, the other wing, so I'm going to come over and do another coat on that wing. But I don't know if you can tell, but even, since I'm trying to paint each of these sections of the wings separately rather than just painting the whole wing, you can still see a little indication where those little shading and highlighting is going to go when we start putting on the final layers. I had to take a break. I got interrupted by a phone call, so back again. A little fresh paint out. We're back to base coating the wings with warm white. This is the second coat on the wings. We're going to do two coats on the wings and the heart and one coat on the angel's face, hair, legs, and hands. And I'm base coating, like I said, trying to keep my 
tracing lines or the indication of where the tracing lines are still apparent through the um, the base coat so that I don't have to trace this all down again. We will have to do a few little details. You might want to trace her face on after we've got her face base coated, but we're not going to do that until we do the, the flesh tones that are going to go over the white. Okay, so there we are with I'm sorry, two coats on the wings, and I want you to continue on and base coat her hair with one coat, her legs and hands with one coat, her upper body, we're going to put a coat on there, and then do a couple of coats on the heart. Let that all dry, and then we'll come back and start base coating the flesh tones on her face and legs and hands. Okay, I just wanted to check back in and show you I've got the hair based, her face and bodies based with one coat. I've got the first coat on the inside of the heart, and I've left this outer edge pink for the moment. I'm going to put another coat on this inner part before I paint that outer edge. But I don't know if you can see on her face a little bit. It's not probably so obvious as it is right here close to the camera but you can still see where the outlines of her chin even though it's all white you can still see the broad outlines of the design so that you know we should be able to finish this without doing a lot more tracing uh, you can still see the separation of her legs and her hands so um, that's what I mean if you if you base each part separately as a as if you were doing it in individual colors. There's just a little bit of a, a delineation between the sections of the, the pattern that will make it easier when you start going back in to do your shading and highlighting. So I think my heart's dry. I'll put a second coat on here. I'm using a, a half inch brush this time just because this area is bigger. It's a half inch flat. Again, you can use whatever's comfortable for you, but in these bigger areas, you'll get a smoother base coat if you use a bigger brush than trying to use a tiny little one. So just smooth it out as best you can, especially over the center here. You don't want lots of ridges along the edges of the design. So usually if, if I've got a brush that's well loaded with paint, when I get close to where I want a sharp edge, I'll start back off away from that edge a little bit and work out to it so that by the time I get out to it, a lot of the paint's blended off my brush and I'm not getting a ridge of paint there. It'll go down flat and then just smooth back into there. and starting back away from that edge and then working out to it. Kind of push the paint out there a little bit. But it doesn't leave a big ridge of paint like it would if you had laid that loaded brush right on that, that line. I'm coming in around her fingers again trying to, to keep the lines of my tracing in place so I can see where they're at so I don't have to retrace those. And come around to this other side of the heart. Again, starting back a little bit, working out to that edge. And I'm just going over that tracing line, that graphite line. Around the fingers and then down along this outer edge. Trying to keep a nice trying to keep a nice graceful curve to that. And again filling back in and smoothing. 
Sometimes as it dries, it'll start looking a little more blotchy. So the sides dried a little bit and the pink's showing through. So I'm just going to, while that's still slightly damp, put a little more paint over top of that. Okay, that, um, you can decide how yours looks. You may want one more coat on that. Mine's still, I'm still seeing a lot of pink through there, so I don't know. I think I'll leave it. I think what, I'll wait until I put the, the shading in when we get around this outer edge. There's going to be a lot of shading. And then if I think this needs to be smoothed out a little more, I can dry brush some whites in here. So let that center area of the heart dry, and then go back and paint over that outer edge. And on the outer edge, you can probably do just one coat, because we're going to stripe that so it won't hurt if it's as white as the inner part. It'll be, probably be prettier if you have a little bit of pink shading through it. So we're going to finish that up and let it dry, and then we'll come back. We're going to work on the skin tones, and I'm using two colors here. The first is the dark is Shading Flesh and Warm White. Um, I like to use a limited palette when I'm painting things, so we're only going to use a total of eight colors in this design. Now, the Shading Flesh is too dark, obviously, for the flesh tone that we want to use, so we're going to mix the two colors to come up with a mid-value. And to do that, I'm just dampening a little small brush and taking a little scoop of the warm white over here, adding it in between the two petals. And I'm going to take a little bit of the shading flesh. We're going to add just a little bit of the dark to the light value. And mix that together with your brush. Maybe pick up a little bit more just to get a light skin or a mid-value skin tone that you like. Now when I do um, a lot of my base coating, especially on faces and things, I like to use a wet on wet again technique. So I'm going to start basing with this mid-value color. Let's probably mix a little bit more of that up so we have enough to get through our face. And I add my shading and highlighting as I go along. So I'm going to start putting some of this middle value here in the center of the cupid's face. And as I come to the bottom, I'll pick up some of the, the white, the warm white on the tip of my brush, and start working that into the bottom along her chin so we can start building some highlights on the lower part of her face. And I'm just, this paint's wet, and I'm just slip slapping it together so it blends. And I'm going to come down over the bottom edge to her chin. And you can see we're darker up here, and we're coming down to a lighter value. And we can refine this as we go along with some more floats and dry brushing. But this will get our, our basic shading and highlighting in. So you work kind of quickly because you want to keep your paint layers wet so they blend together. A little bit more down here. I'm going to add this lighter color to her ears. And then go back into this middle value as we get here towards the top and dampen that top edge again. And then we're going to pick up a little bit of the shading flesh, the darker value, and put that in up here along her hairline. So 
so it'll be shaded under the edges of her hair. spot here. And I just keep working back and forth until it starts tacking up too much to move the paint. Then I'll stop and let that dry. Okay, so you can see we've got the shading under her hair and we come down to the lighter value on her chin. Now we're going to do the same thing on her body. We're going to shade under her chin where her sort of neck and shoulders are. And really the whole area of her body, the only place it's gonna be sort of light is out here on this right shoulder. Everything else is kind of tucked behind that heart and under her chin where it's shaded. So again, we're gonna mix up a little bit of the medium value and we can actually just mix it just a shade darker this time and start filling in. It's a little dry to me, so I'm going to add just a touch of water. And come here under her chin. And when you put this in here, you'll see how this will make her chin, the highlights on her chin pop out even more. color down right to the heart. Get a little bit of the light value out here on the edge of the shoulder. Add a little bit more light out over here on this side. A little bit of shading here where it's behind the heart again. I'm just noticing something that I took a break before I came back to do this and had dinner and while I was gone at the break I was supposed to paint the outside of my heart which I didn't so I'm gonna stop and paint that in with some of the the warm white before we I go on and show you the legs and hands so I'll be back in a few minutes okay I'm back finished my homework Got this outer edge of the heart based with one coat of the warm white. So let's go back to the skin tones and we're going to work here on her legs. And again, we're using shading flush and warm white to create our flush values. And we're mixing a middle value of flush from some warm white and a little bit of shading flush. 
and this time we're going to work on this lower leg and add that medium flesh value to the middle of the leg here. We want it shaded up here where it goes under her other leg and we're going to highlight a little more down here on her foot. So again, if it gets too tacky, just add a touch of water to your brush. And I just always just brush mix as I go. If you want if you're more comfortable, you can mix up a, a little petal of this with a palette knife or something, but I like the, the tiny variations in color so it's not so perfectly even through the whole painting, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So here we are, we're going to work that down and we can use that white base color that we based your leg with and foot with to work, you know, use some of that for the highlight. You just kind of stretch that base color of the flesh tone out and let more of that white show through. And then we're going to pick up a little bit more of this sh shading and I'm almost side loading my brush, just picking it up on the long toe of the angle brush. And then I'm going to work that up here at the top of this leg where it tucks behind the other one and then back here along her hand. So you can see how quickly this goes when you just sort of do your base coats and shading and highlighting all in one step. And then like I said we can refine it a little bit more later if we feel like it needs to be stronger. We can add a little more of the highlight here to her toe. Trying to fill in those graphic graphite lines a little bit. Let's see. With a little bit of highlight down here to the bottom. Sole of her foot. So move to her upper leg and the same process. We're going to fill in most of it with the medium value and we're going to shade up here along this top edge of her leg and here where it comes behind her hand. So scoop up a little bit of warm white, add a little shading flesh to that, mix it, and then start filling that in. Now each time I feel like my paint's just tacked up a little too much. Let's be pretty dry in here. And I have sealed this hard, but sometimes, you know, just depending on how dry the wood is that you're painting on, it can suck in a lot of the the moisture. And just brush again, brush mixing a little puddle as I go. you're base coating these you want if you stop in one area you don't want a real sharp edge so in case that dries you know leave it a soft edge and then if it does tack up on you when you start to go over you're not going to have this real defined line where the paint has dried we're going to add a little Shading here where it goes behind her hand. And I'm going to work that shading up 
here over the top of her calf. Pick up a little more water. And you see I keep twisting and turning this hard to turn it at an angle that's comfortable for me to work the color. I find it easier to to drag paint in different directions than trying to work against myself. So let's pull this up a little further up here. And then let's work some highlight down here on the lower part of her her leg. Pick up a little bit of the base and tip the brush in the, the warm white. Let's lighten this toe up. Lost a little bit of that shade right there, so I'm gonna tuck some of that back in there. Okay, so I think that that's good so far as a start for the her legs and her body and face. So now we have just the hands left to do. And for the moment, we're just gonna keep them pretty simple. We're gonna base them with some of the medium flush value. And because the hands are so small, we won't try to do a, a whole lot of shading or highlighting in this base color. So let's just Get some, um, keep, keep the tips of her fingers shaped. And I've got this paint kind of pretty wet and soupy, so it's just kind of washing over that base color of the warm white. These areas are pretty small to fill in. And then we'll do the same on, on this hand. A little more water to that. Just creating the little tips of her fingers. So we'll go back later and add a little bit more shading and highlighting. But they'll they're pretty simple little shapes, so we won't put a lot of detail in those. Okay, so I think we've got everything base coated now on her skin, and I'm gonna clean my brush out. I don't usually clean my brush out too much when I'm, you know, working like on all the skin tones. I just keep picking colors up. I don't wash out the brush in between each one. So let's go on and do, let's see, while the skin tones are drying, we can start working on her hair a little bit. And we're going to use a couple colors in her hair. We're going to use honey brown and we're going to use mustard seed. And these will be the the colors that we use to shade and highlight and add the blonde the blonde colors to our hair. 
Okay, I've added a dot, a little spot of honey brown and mustard seed to the palette, and I'm still going to work with this little quarter inch angle. And to do the hair, we're going to kind of do a washy float to make these little waves and ringlets. So I've, I've wet my brush, and I'm going to start with the honey brown color. And I want that sort of soupy on my brush, kind of a, a washy mix. And we're going to start up here at the top of her hair, and I'm just going to start working little kind of C-strokes, U-strokes, along the edge of her hair to start creating that effect of little ringlets and curls. And just add water and paint to your brush as you go along, just as you start running out. along this back edge of her hair. And then start some some in layers on the inside to create depth. When I reach off to the side, I'm putting some water on my brush, just dipping the tip of my brush in water. And you want to change the directions of these. You don't want all of them going up to the back like that first row we did. As you come in, start turning some down into the sides. So it's just kind of topsy-turvy curls all over her head. Now while we've got this color on our brush, we can go ahead and start adding some shading in some other areas because we want to repeat the same color in other spots on the design. So let's add some of the honey brown to the bottom of her wings. We're going to you know, shade this bottom area with a little bit of honey brown on the, the edges of the wings. Flip and do the side a little. And I'm also going to use it to, to float around the inside of this, this heart. We'll layer some other colors over it later, but this will be the the first shading around it. We'll work around those fingers. And when I float, I do a lot of little choppy strokes. Lots of water, little choppy strokes, and as as you 
if you start getting some ridges or I guess not ridges but little texture you can go back over it and float to smooth that out and I want this real transparent so I'm I keep adding water to my brush and say chop 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 and then I'll go back over and smooth it stop down here at the point. And it's a little hard, you know, when you come to a point like that to start up the other side without disturbing the float. So we're just going to let that stop and we'll come back here to the top point and work back the other direction. So chop, chop and smooth. I'm starting to get a little bit of bleed on my brush. I probably I'll wipe that out. If you get, you know, if you start getting too much paint over to this corner. I usually just take my finger and pinch and pull that flat again to pull any of that excess color out of there. I don't like cleaning brushes so I just keep using this dirty brush. Working around the fingers and then coming back and smoothing that out a little. And back down to that point. So now you can see the color, we're kind of repeating the colors. We've got this honey brown on the hair, we've got some on the wings, we've got some on the heart. So it, it makes your eye flow through the design. Our hair's dry, so now we can go back and start putting some of the golden highlights in it. And we're going to use the the mustard seed color and by itself it's probably not quite bright enough so I'm going to add a touch of the the warm white to it that'll make it a little bit more opaque and then we're going to come through and start doing the same little C type strokes to add some um, highlights of the golden color in her hair to make her look more of a blonde now if you'd rather do her with brown hair or red hair, you can just, instead of going with the light mustard seed color, you could go with a darker value. One of the browns um, for red hair, reds and oranges look really pretty. Again, I'm side loading the little angle brush with mustard seed, adding a little bit of the warm white into it to make it a little more opaque. And coming along and adding some of these highlights through her hair to give it more of the blonde. Okay, so that gives us another overall base color for her hair. So now let's 
add some of that yellow into the wings. Now we shaded the lower part of the wings with the, the honey brown, but as we come to the top, let's uh, lighten the shading up. So we'll we'll switch over here to the the yellow and come along and have a little shading between those feathers on the wings with the yellow color. Again, we're working to tie all the colors in the design together. We want to continue to repeat the colors to draw your eye through the design. Same thing on this side, we're going to add a little of that color down here on the bottom ones to separate the feathers. And add a little yellow to the tips out here. We can start refining the face and the skin tones a little more. Again, we're going to start adding a little bit more shading and some more highlights. So this time we're going to do some floated color and we're going to use our, our shading flesh and I'm just side loading the angle brush with some of my flesh color. We're going to go back and reinforce some of these shaded areas. Don't want to come down onto the ears, but we do want to add a little shade inside the ears. So I'm going to do a little C stroke about maybe a sixteenth of an inch in from the edge of her ear. So we get that that little sh shell shape of the ear. Again, we'll come back here and float again under her chin. We'll do all the shading on this go round. And then we'll come back and do some highlights. Just to just start softening the skin tones a little bit. If your skin was looking a little blotchy, this will help smooth it out some. Let's turn around and repeat that here above the heart. Helps you clean up the edge of that heart if it got a little bit messy. Same thing on her legs. We're going to float here along the top of the hand. And then just along the back edge of this leg. And up and over the heel. And then taper that off right there. Here on the bottom leg again, in between the legs to separate them, and just this little area right here up against the heart and hand.
if we can add a little little bit here under the toe so that we um, separate that leg from the, the foot above it and wrap it around the heel. hands um, will float in that shading a little and again this is pretty simple in the hands. We're going to come along the outer edge of this hand on the left. And I'm switching to this side because we had just worked on the legs and they're wet and I don't get, want to get my hands into it so we'll come over here and work on this hand. So I'm floating to the back so it gives the impression that the hand is going behind the heart fading into the distance and back up that thumb. And then we're going to do just a little bit of a, a definition in between the fingers. So I'm just soften that out with the other end of my brush. Now if you can see it now, we're getting kind of the illusion of some little fingers here. And she's got kind of chubby little fingers. Okay, this hand's a little brighter. We're not going to put as much shading on it, but we can do a little bit here on the top of the thumb just like we were doing it on the top of the legs. Darken that just a little. And then um, a little in between the fingers here. What I'm doing is I'm floating, but then where the, the float ends, it gets a little hard edge. So I'm just taking the clean end of my brush and just tapping that to soften that down so we don't have that hard, straight edge that we're looking at. we're going to float some highlights of the mostly warm white plus just a very little touch of that shading flush. We want a really very light flush tone. And we're going to come along and float along her jawline. And I'm just walking that up a little bit onto the center of her face. Just a little touch of a highlight around the edge of her ear. Just make that shading show up just a little bit more. And then we can put the 
hand should be dry. Just highlight a little bit here on the back of this hand. Got a little too much of the shading brush in there, so I'm going to lighten it up a little more. We're going to come along and highlight her toes and just strengthen that highlight up the front of her leg. Mm -hmm. to her toe. Do the same thing on this one. Just the tips of her fingers, that'll help set them out from the shading on the heart. And we can do a, a little bit on this hand, because this hand again is a little bit lighter. So let's highlight these fingers a little bit more. I'd like to add some some red tones into the heart and the color I've chosen is uh, called Cinnamon Drop. It's a one of the newer I think Americana colors and it's just a really pretty kind of watermelony red which goes pretty with the pink. I'm going to add a little bit of it into her hair. And I'm not going to add it straight into her hair because I don't want her hair to go red. So I'm going to side lid it with a little bit of the honey brown. And I'll warm it up and make it blend in a little bit more into these, these shadow areas. Again, I want that paint pretty wet and soupy just so It goes on kind of almost like a watercolor effect. But you can see this will add a few more little shadows into her hair. And we're going to use this color in her blush and in some of the shading on the shadows in the heart. But you can see where that's starting to add a little more depth to the color of her hair. Again, with a little bit of that honey brown in it, we can add some touches of it. Again, I want a lot of water. You want this to be more watercolory and transparent. 
I'm going to add some of those tones to the wings. And these lower shadows. And we can also add some of this color into the shadows on her legs and it gives kind of rosy glow to the skin. Again, this is very transparent. You don't want it to go on very opaque. It, it, you want that under paint to show through. This is just adding a little bit of a blush to her skin. And again, this is the cinnamon drop color mixed with a little bit of the honey brown. As you can see, that adds some just uh, blush tones to her skin and warms it up even more than just the, the dark flesh does. The honey brown has a little more yellow tones to it, so it adds some yellow tones to the skin. So let's add a little bit of that here on her chest here behind the heart. Just 